Welcome everybody to the Unnormalized Podcast. This is your host Frankie A, and today I am joined with uh, a really badass guest that I've been waiting forever to have her on. Um, we're joined with Sam again from MTV's Real World San Diego and MTV's The Challenge Battle of the Seasons. So thanks, Sam, for joining us all the way from Virginia, right? Yep, still here. Still here, right? Um, trying to buckle down and hopefully uh, that pain in the ass, Dorian, just skips right over you guys. I, I don't want to hear see that happen for you guys down in Virginia. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I actually fly. I'm flying out tomorrow afternoon. So oh, shit. I hopefully we'll be able to get out and get away from it. So In time, yeah. That actually happened to me a couple of years back. I was in Vegas and when Hurricane Irene came and Ooh. I just... I just kept my ass there. I was like, you know what? I'm not even trying it. I'm not even going to get my ass on the plane. I went down right down to the front desk and said, listen, there's a hurricane hitting in Jersey. And what could you do for me? And they said, well, we'll keep your air. So I stayed my ass in Vegas for an extra three days. So thank you, Hurricane Irene. Right? That's, hey, that's not a bad deal. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So, Sam, um, everybody kind of knows you from... Um, your time on MTV. But what I like to do here at the Unnormalized Podcast is I like to, you know, talk to guests about um, just life in general. So go back in time for us, put yourself in a time capsule, and tell us who little Sam is growing up um, in the world and who your family is and all your kind of background that we would want to know about you. So I grew up in two-parent household they're still married which nowadays is mind-blowing yeah i know uh, right they yeah my parents will be i think it's 34 years next year that they'll mm-hmm. be married bless so them bless that's, them. yeah and uh my dad did 28 years in the navy so that's how we ended up in norfolk and oh um, so you're a navy you're like a navy brat kind of <laughs> but i don't necessarily classify myself as that because i've lived i've lived here my whole life like okay. a lot of you know military brats that you hear from you know it's it's mainly, oh, well, I moved here, I moved there, they move every two or four years, you know, mm-hmm. and I luckily was able to uh, graduate with the same kids I started school with. So oh, that's awesome, a very, awesome. a very, it's a not normal thing to happen, especially with, with active duty military. Um, but yeah, I mean, I played soccer since the time literally I could walk. All right. Um, I've got a little a younger sister. Uh, she's five and a half years younger than me. She just got engaged a couple of weeks ago. Nice. So she will, we've got a date set for next sep, next September. So that's super awesome. Nice, nice, um, nice. You played, um, you played soccer your whole life, Sam? Yeah, I played up until, up until my senior year of high school when I was too old to play club ball and I didn't play school or I didn't play varsity soccer. I played JV, but. Gotcha. Um, our, my son, I have a, are, I have a 17 year old who's a soccer junkie. He's been playing since he's three. So he's going to love watching this. <laughs> oh yeah. He, uh, I'm actually, I'm going to the women's national game in Charlotte oh, in a couple nice. in like three weeks. So I'm stoked. Well, it's, a, awesome. it's like a six hour drive. So I was like, I'm yeah, going. yeah, definitely. Definitely. They're badass anyway. Oh yeah, for sure. I would, I, I've got to see a lot of the 99ers play uh, when they did their victory tour. Uh, they actually came and played here in Virginia Beach. So that was that was pretty sweet. Oh, uh, I just like, full dis- full disclaimer. I have nothing, know nothing, absolutely nothing about sports. <laughs> my that's son, fine. my son is the sports junkie. He's actually played soccer since he was three. Um, he actually went to the same academy that Cristiano Ronaldo went to Benfica Academy, um, but here in the States, here in Jersey, we have one. So um, he's played, you know, varsity soccer, and he lives, breathes soccer. So he's graduated this year. So hopefully he can fucking kick that ball. (laughs) Right? Hey, get a scholarship, man. Yes, please. You know, college ain't cheap. Broke-ass dad trying to start a podcast. You know, who could pay for college? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's 
not me. Yeah, that's for certain. Me either, me either. So you, so you grew up in in a military family, and so like, how was that growing up? Like, I just have like visions of like very sh- strict parenting household. Um. So, yes and no. Like, I love my dad. Don't get me wrong, but he's a huge softy. Like, he's like a big teddy bear. My mom was the one that was definitely on the more strict end. And her dad was actually in the military or in the Navy as well. So that's where she gets that from. But um, it actually, it wasn't too bad. You know, my dad was gone a lot. Mm. Um, you know, he did he did nine six-month deployments Wow. My, in his time in. So, I mean, you're thinking, I mean, what is that? Four and a half, five, almost five years of my life. You mm-hmm. know that he wasn't around for. You know that's birthdays, Christmases, holidays. Sure, yeah, stuff, that's you know, hard. Like we used to do like Christmas in June because mm. he was home, and we would just do it early, and then we would have to, you know, be like, oh well, we're not doing actual Christmas because my dad won't be there. Like we would still open up like little gifts and stuff, but it wouldn't be of what it normally is. But um, but yeah, no, I mean it. It was great. I mean, I I lived in Italy when I was a kid. Stop. I was an infant. I was an infant. It doesn't count. I was, I think my mom flew back to the States when she was 38 weeks pregnant with me. Wow. And then I, I was born here and then we went back uh, a little while later and I, I lived there for almost a year. Wow. That's, I'm Italian. So like I've never been to the motherland. So it's, you need, you need to go. I went we took a family vacation a couple of years ago and it's, we went to Naples and it was absolutely. Well, that's gorgeous. actually, that's actually where my family's from. My family's from Naples. Oh, Napoli. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. So, um, talk to me about, okay. So, you know, you're growing up in, in, in a military family and what made you get into auditioning for MTV's real world? So they did an open casting call in Norfolk, which is about 15 minutes from where I grew up. And my one of my best friends at the time heard it on, like heard an ad for it on the radio or something. And mm-hmm. she was like, I really want to go. I really want to go. And I was like, yo, that shit's so stupid. Like, do you know how many people <laughs> try to do this? She's like, I know, but I just want to go. And I'm like, all right. So it was like the day before I was like, hey, are you excited about going tomorrow? And she's like, I'm not going. I'm like, why not? She's like, because nobody will go with me. I don't want to go by myself. And I was like, all right, fine. So I was like, I'll go with you. So we went, we went, we got there at like six o'clock in the morning. The auditions didn't even, the doors didn't even open until like 11. Wow. I had a cooler. I had Capri Suns, fruit snacks, gushers, <laughs> a loaf of bread, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. We had, this was before like Bluetooth speakers, you know, we had the one where you had like plug it in. Plug it in. Like absolute garbage because it was just like aluminum foil. <laughs> and we went in and uh, we tried out together and I ended up, we made, we made a pact that day. We were like, all right, just for shits and giggles, if either one of us actually make it onto the show, the other person has to fly the other person out so they can at least like see the house and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. And um, so I tried out in April of 2010 and I was 20. I, I would have, I was turning 21 that November. Mm-hmm. So I tried out, I made it through that, did the video interview immediately after or the day after I like the casting call. And then I did my home video and I sent that literally as I was dropping it in the FedEx Dropbox, they called me and like, hey, you made semifinal. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? And they're like, well, you have to drive to Charlotte. You don't, we don't pay for it, but you got to get there or else you forfeit. And I'm like, so I was in 21. I can't rent a hotel room. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I called up my mom. I'm like, yo, I got to go. She's like, well, I got shit to do this weekend. <laughs> I called up my dad. My dad's like, yeah, I can't. I'm like, I'm going to be with your mom. I called my grandma. I was like, Grandma, yo, we got to go to Charlotte. She's like, for what? And I told her, she's like, all right, fine. So oh, she, grandma. Grandma in with the... <laughs> with the save. Touch. <laughs> with the double play at home plate. <laughs> but, like, so we went We went down. I did, the, I did that interview, and I was like, all right, well, what now? And they're like, well, you know, we'll call you in a few weeks to let you know if you made finals or not. So it's going to be either way. Any call, it could be whatever. Yeah. 
So they called me like two weeks later, like, hey, you made finals. I'm like, okay, bet. Do I have to pay to fly somewhere this time? They're like, no, we're going to fly you out to LA. We'll put you up for a couple of days. We'll do interviews, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go out. I do. I did, did finals. I actually went to this really huge party the night before I flew to finals. <laughs> like, I was drinking up until we got in the car and my friend drove me to the airport. And oh, shit. it was, I was so hungover. They, I had to take, like, I don't know if you know this, but, like, for reality television, there's, like, a personality test that you have to take. Yeah, 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 yeah. 576 true or false questions. What the fuck? So I'm fucking hungover, sitting in an In-N-Out burger in <laughs> L.A., just, like, alcohol pouring out of me. And I'm just, like, I'm, like, yo, can you, like, go to the hotel? Can I take a nap? No, you got to do this. Oh, my. Okay. So I do it. Anyways. So I go through all that, and they're, like, Okay, we'll call you in a few weeks. So I fly home. That was in June. So they kept they called me every week or so. They're like, Hey, how are you? You know, what are your thoughts on this? Is everything still cool? And I was like, Yeah, you know, I was like, What's the timeline? They're like, We're trying to secure a location right now, so just hang out. So they called me in August and I, they were like, Hey, how are you? I'm like, I'm good, you know. And they're like, Well, unfortunately, due to some extenuating circumstances, you can't you can't make it this season. And I'm like, what? Meanwhile, my ber- my 21st birthday is in November. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, well, can you at least tell me where you're going? They're like, no, confidentiality, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, whatever. So a couple weeks go by, probably about a month. And I've started school at this point. And they called again. They're like, hey, how long would it take you to get to leave? And I'm like, dude, I'm a full-time student, like, yeah, yeah. past the withdrawal date, like, I was, I was just gonna lose my money, because I was paying, I paid cash for school, I didn't get to the student loan, so, like, I You're would out. have been Death. screwed, yeah. you know, five grand, and I'm just yeah. like, eh, yeah, so no. was, like, two weeks, and, like, oh, never mind, and I was like, okay, because I, I guess I was an alternate, but I just didn't know I was an alternate, okay, and then, um, so I did that, and then, well, they're like, wait, are you 21 yet, and I was like, no, I'm like, oh, never mind. You wouldn't have been able to go anyways. And I'm like, where the fuck? Yeah. Where where are they? Where are they that I have to be 21? And then it dawned on me. I was like, they're probably in Vegas because it was the 25th season. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And, sense. and in order to live in a casino without parental you guardianship, be, you have to be 21. Be 21, yeah. So time goes on, whatever. It's January. I get home from work super late. I'm watching, like, the season finale of, like, Jersey Shore or something. And then it says, stay tuned for a sneak preview of the real of our, the 26th, 25th anniversary season of the real world back to Las Vegas. And I'm like, are you, I lost it. I threw <laughs> shit. I was so <laughs> mad. Well, they say, so when they called me and they said that I didn't make season 25, they, they saved a spot in finals for me for ne- the following oh, okay. season. So okay. I didn't have to retry out. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so, so that's why. Like, so I didn't have to do another tape, video, any other interviews, you know. So they ended up, so when I flew out in the finals, and right at the end of my interview, they're like, all right, where do you think you're going? They didn't say, where do you think you might go? They didn't say none of that. They're like, where do you think you're going? So I was like, bet, already made it, in the bag. (laughs) And uh, so I was like, Sydney, Australia, because I was like, I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. For the moon, the moon. And hell yeah. Star, right? Hell yeah, hell yeah. So they're like a little bit closer. I was like, Hawaii. And I'm like, eh, a little. Mind you, we're in LA. Yeah, yeah. Like a little bit closer. I'm like, I don't know, dude. Just tell me. They're like, San Diego. I was like, really? <laughs> San Diego. I was like, I literally was just there last year on a family vacation. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's all you got for me? <laughs> And so, but it was dope. And then that was in like May and we, or that was in probably March or April of the following year, 2011. Gotcha. And um, yeah, I flew out the end of May, moved in first week in June and was there for three months and we flew home beginning of September. And and a lot of, a lot of people don't realize, Sam, that, you know, we, we only see, well, 
for those of us who don't know the process of of auditioning for like a reality show, I actually auditioned. I used to be a chef, so I used to I auditioned for. Um, a couple of reality shows where I had to do all that kind of stuff, um, you know, submit videos and all that. And, you know, you get moved on to the next phase and it's another video or it's another process that you have to go through. But what people don't know is that there is this really extensive um, auditioning process that a person has to go through. It's not like you just meet a producer and the producer's like, yeah, we like what you're about let's get you in front of a camera. Um, so thank you for walking us through that process because when people see like, okay, just, it's great. It looks like a lot of fun. There's a lot of hard work that you have to put into getting, just getting yourself secured into like the finals and all that kind of stuff. And, oh, yeah. and, I, and I can attest to it. I actually made it to the final round of a food challenge kind of show. This is before like the food network came out. I'm dating myself, but um, something similar to that happened. They, couldn't get a um, a network to buy, you know, like the production company had everything. It was like set. a pilot type thing. It was exactly. Like, you, you do the pilot, they send the pilot out to X, Y, and Z big Correct. companies, and then if they buy it, they buy it. It's a show. If not, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it didn't even get that far. I got to the finals, and the 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 producers basically said we don't have anybody to pick this up so it wasn't going anywhere but it was like that whole process i remember like having like my family videotape me and all that kind of stuff to have to go through the process and send it out and then wait for the phone call to the next process the next stage so um yeah it's a fucking pain in the ass you know well and what what people don't also don't realize is that like in the process of making those videos because you're not used to being in front of a camera yeah. and you're just used to it's so awkward. Yes, it's not like, natural. Even like this. No. Even this is not natural. Like, <laughs> I enjoy talking to people, but being, like, on camera is not something that, you know, you're naturally... It's not, a, it's not an everyday thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and especially, um, you know, real world has been kind of like the forefather if you if you will for reality t television so um yeah. it was you guys the casts of uh the real world that really were kind of immersing themselves in that kind of fishbowl environment um so how, what is okay so walk me through this so you you get to the house and um i'm sure you're shitting yourself over the the house that you're in i mean because oh yeah that was, we, like, we walked up. That house was so, dope. I remember the San Diego house. That was a dope house. Well, what's crazy is that, like, from the front, like, yeah, it's a big house. Don't get me wrong. But from the front, it's just kind of like, okay, this is a big house. Mm -hmm. Because you can't see the cliff that's behind it, and it's, yeah. like, the ocean view and shit like that. So, like, we walked in, and I walked in, and these, the whole entire back of the house is all bay window. Like, it's all just clear glass. So you walk out and it's just a drop, a pool and a drop off cliff and it's the Pacific Ocean and I'm just like, holy shit! Like we had, you walked in on one level, you went down, then you went up to the kitchen and then there was a roof right out there, then there was another roof and another roof up top. Holy and shit! And then our bedrooms were actually downstairs. It was a huge like split level house. Yeah, it was all like but reverse living. Insane. I mean, that was the that was the first time that I had ever lived away from my parents. I had lived with my oh. parents. I never went away to college. I went to community college. So, like, I never lived in a dorm. So, I never yeah. had – I had never lived with anybody. I had never lived without my family. I had never been away from my family for longer than, like, a couple of days, like, on a, like a trip with some friends. And to sit here and be like, okay, I'm going to move all the way across the country yeah. for three months to submerge myself into the, un the, un the unknown, unknown life. Yeah. And have it filmed. And I'm sitting yeah. here and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> you know? So and like, like, so how, how, like when you, when you walk into a situation like that, like were, were you the first one, one of the first ones in, or were you one of the last ones in? Zach and I were the last two. The last ones. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like, I mean, I, here, here's what I will say. That show, 
is completely unscripted 100%. The only thing that is fixed is like, like when I magically met Zach in the airport. Yeah. Or like, you know, like the initial like introductory scenes. Mm -hmm. Other than that, everything else is literally because of us. So, you know, Frank met up with Ashley. Nate met up with Alex. Priscilla got dropped off by her mom. And then <laughs> Zach, she lives in San Diego. Yeah. But, and then Zach and I met in the airport. So when we got there, the three girls got the, the big bedroom that had three beds in it. Mm-hmm. Frank and Zach, or Frank and Nate got the other bedroom because they were like, all right, do we want a chance not liking these people with these other people yeah. that are coming in and just room together? Or we want to split up and then be screwed. Mm-hmm. So they roomed together, and that's how I, I ended up with Zach because we were the last two, which I didn't yeah. care. I mean, heck. Yeah, you're you're staying in this house. Who the, who where the fuck who the fuck cares where you're sleeping? <laughs> you're sleeping in the bathroom. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I, I have slept on that bathroom floor. <laughs> so, um, you know, is there, you know, you talk about there not being like scripted, which is really refreshing to, to know because for people like myself who have watched Real World since season one, um, you know, it's good to know that there's authenticity behind it uh, because there's a lot oh, of reality yeah. shows out there now that are doing the whole not scripted scripted thing and you can kind of tell you know what i mean like i think there is um a genuine authenticity with the how mtv kind of they kind of like put together the the cast and um it's kind of like organic you can feel it you know what i mean um Mm -hmm. so is it when you walk in was there like are you guys just all fucking going ape shit and crazy because like you're in this nice house or is there like instant connections going on there? Like what, what's the dynamics, you know, in the house? The instant, the instant connection that you do get is the initial, like, holy shit. We are seven people of, you know, 50,000 applicants that we got picked. Yeah. So like you automatically have that, that initial right then and there. And then, like, the first the first 24 hours is kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to everybody. We're going to – everybody gets along within that first, you know, 24 to 72 hours because yeah. you haven't really done anything yet. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you've gone out. You swim in the pool. You you know, do you've done those types of things. But then again, it's just like you're still new. Yeah. But then once you're like – you see everybody's habits and, you know, like you figure the- out who's dirty, who's not, who's, you know, who's, who's loud, who's mm-hmm. not loud, who mm-hmm. snores, who walks around naked, you know, <laughs> shit like that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody's true colors and personalities start coming out. Yep, exactly. So um, what is, like, how how is – the experience of now I know that you've 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 told this story probably a million times but um you actually came out on the show or prior to no 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 I came out I came out fall of 2007 oh okay so then you you I I had been out yeah I had been out for quite some time so then talk to me about like how that is portrayed on a reality show um, like the real world where you're not being kind of like, I hate to say like, so forgive me, like they're, they're labeling you as the token gay person on the cast. You know what I mean? Like where, you know, do you, do you feel like a sense of responsibility to the community to represent in a certain way? Um, you know how um, it's, kind of you know what i mean with cuz on my season frank was yeah also there and so he had started the show out you know he was bisexual mm-hmm. you know blah, blah blah and i knew that i knew that just from conversations that he and i had but i guess the rest of the house didn't know and then that's when like you see it in one of the episodes where he's like oh i'm bisexual you know and and, and everyone's like Zach and Nate <gasps> yeah. are like <laughs> yeah and we're just like and i'm just like okay well, you know, like, he kind of had a rough time, like, 
just adjusting to being actually his true self. Yeah. And so, like, he had never been to a Pride event. He had never been to, like, a gay sex shop. He had never done those types of things. And so, like, I was like, dude, I told him, I was like, yeah, we're going to get a Pride. Because that, like, in pre-production, like, in my interviews and stuff, I was like, yo, when they were talking to me about San Diego and stuff, I was like, yo, we have to get a Pride. Or, like, in the emails, like, from, with production, they'll be like, yeah. is there anything in San Diego that you want to do oh, cool. that we would need clearance for bef- well ahead of time? Gotcha, like, gotcha, Dude, gotcha. I want to go to Pride. I was like, if I'm going to be in San Diego during Pride, I we're, we're going. Yeah, yeah. And so Pride is the I shit. Frank, oh, my God. Well, San Diego is one of the biggest states. Biggest, in yeah, the yeah. States. My sister-in-law actually like, lives in San Diego, so oh, I've never yeah. never been, but, you know, I've, I've heard of the Pride, parade, the Pride events there are, like, insane, so. It's it shit starts on like Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. It goes yeah. all the way to Sunday. Like it's crazy. But he had never done anything like that. Yeah. No, no matter the spectrum, you know. And so I was like, yeah, we're gonna go do this. So I took him to his first pride, and I kind of just helped him work through his emotions, and you know, and and things like that. It was like super cool. So like, but at the same time, I knew that I had, I kind of had a very unique niche to be able to represent for the lesbians as well as showing you know these other you know s- you know small town sure small headed people that yeah it's okay you know if you can accept me you can accept him exactly there's so, no difference and and that's what's awesome about something like that and i talk to people um a lot about you know doing stuff that's outside of the box. That's kind of like the whole premise of, of the show besides pop culture um, is talking to people that kind of do things outside of the box and it gives them a platform um, to have a voice. And I, you know, besides Frank having somebody in the house that can kind of walk him through, you know, being more comfortable with himself and and getting into the community and embracing the community, um, it gives you know, like you said, it, it 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 reaches the small town America who has a very skewed perception of what it's like to be other than themselves. So right. um, you know, I, I'm sure that comes with a lot of pressure, though. Um, you know, having to feel like especially not only you know it's one thing to be like a radio personality or something like that but you're being filmed every single fucking thing that you're doing is being filmed and every moment of every day yeah so you know um you know i i commend you because um that's not necessarily an easy thing to do you know um and to represent the way that you you have for the LGBTQ community is pretty commendable. So um, thank you for that. You know, I, I'm very connected to the community. I have friends and family who um, are in the community. So when I see somebody that kind of has so, a tremendous amount of pride um, for their community, it's something that, you know, I respect gratefully. So. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, no problem. No problem. So you do the show um, and you come out of the show. Do you take away those relationships with you when you leave? I mean, because it is a unique a unique situation that you guys are kind of like, it's the seven of you, a bunch of production people, but ultimately when you got, it's, it's about you guys, you know? Um, right. so, so do you take those relationships with you or is it kind of like, peace out, you know, I'll see you on a reunion show or, you know, when we bump into each other at an MTV event or something like that? You kind of, once you spend three months with somebody, with some people, you know, you can, you literally have the ability to, hold on to real quick. I'm going to turn this light on out here real quick. Cause it's starting That's to get right. dark. Yeah, got it. Whoa. Let's see if that works. And then I can flip around if need be. That, that Labor Day, even though it's not daylight savings time. Dude, what the fuck? It's like school started and they were like. And then the fucking turn off the lights. I live on the beach. Exactly. So it's like, I don't. 
know what the fuck is going on right now. It's like exactly. dark here, you know, and normally it's like, it just was like no progression of anything, so. Right, so, um, but like once you, once you spent those three months with those people, you know, you can, you get to pick and choose what you take away from it. And really yeah. at the end of the day, regardless of the situation, you know, like, like we, on the show, we had what we called the crab circle. And it was literally everybody but Zach and Ashley because they just shoved their heads up each other's asses and they they did their own thing while the five of us had the time of our lives. Yeah. And like, so Frank, 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 Priscilla, Alex, and and um, Nate, the five and and myself, the five of us actually stayed in contact for for a while. Um, Frank moved to LA and stayed in contact with Alex quite a bit. Um, Priscilla is in San Diego, so they stayed in contact quite mm-hmm. a bit. You know, um, I didn't really talk to Zach or Ashley much until the reunion. And then, um, you know, of course the challenge happened and Zach and I and Frank had our misunderstandings throughout yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, now, I mean, I... I hadn't seen Frank since the challenge reunion and I saw, I w- we, he and I actually went to Priscilla's wedding in May. Oh, this and May. This May. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that must have been. So, I mean, that's what, <laughs> ten, eight years later. Eight years. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that's a long time. A long it time. Is. And so like he, he and I, that, that was the first time we had seen each other since, since this challenge reunion. And you know, that wasn't a pretty sight. Yeah, yeah. But we, it was, it was nice. It was cool, you know. And like I talked to Nate. I'm actually gonna go when I go to the the soccer game in Charlotte. I'm gonna, mm-hmm. my dad and I are gonna stay with Nate. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So it's almost like you build like I mean like I mean even in families. I mean I don't have to tell you families fight. Families, oh, yeah. you know, they fight. They make up. I mean it's just like an extended family. I mean, you guys were close and and you know put that whole fishbowl on top of it, um, it, it can make for, you know, some really fucked up shit to go down. Um, but, you know, it's great to know because you guys had such chemistry together, you and Frank. Um, so it's great to hear that, you know, after all these years that you can put that kind of stuff behind you. I mean, and you guys were like young, you know what I mean? You, you... Ours was a very weird setup because we started our show and our preview started airing while we were still filming. So like, I think, I think our show premiered like the 19th of September or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I got home from filming September 9th. Like it was a pretty quick turnaround. So literally like I was home and then like two weeks later, we, I flew back to LA to do uh, the after shows. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, what they'll do is they'll do two after shows each time we go out. And, like, you have to bring an ass load of clothes because then you have to change so it looks like it's a different day. Yeah. And then, um, so, like, I did, I did, I think we did four after shows. Okay. And then the reunion's actually in New York. Oh, okay. And then that was beginning of December. Gotcha. So, a couple months, you know, goes by. Now, what is that like? Is it, like, fucking awkward to be sitting there, like, especially because you're being probed questions, you know what I mean? It's almost like you guys are being, like, you know, you know, prodded, you know, to... it's super funny because, so when they, when the reunions and the after shows happen, there's a, we have, like, a green room where we all, like, hang out and stuff like that before we start filming... And they bring it in, and there's this, there's this cooler, <laughs> and it has orange juice in it. Mm. And the orange juice with the X on it may or may not have alcohol in it. And that's what they tell us, because, like, they can't really be like, hey, you have to, you know, they can't force us to drink. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It yeah. definitely makes it a lot easier to be able to, like, oh, uh, sit. Open up, up and unwind. Drink. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, we did that. But I mean, it's it really wasn't bad. I mean, no, no. I mean, it definitely editing is what really gets it. Sure. Yeah. And absolutely. So, 
because like we know what ha- actually happened mm-hmm. not saying that the things on the show didn't actually happen but the way editing is oh yeah yeah, yeah. kind of you know it tells its own game. story yeah you can exactly. you can take like actual events that happen and kind of switch things up a little bit where it tells its own story um, exactly and it may not be what you want to convey out there to everybody else who's watching um, right. so moving into the challenge now, like such a fucking fan. I love that shit. Probably because if you saw me, this, this, this guy doesn't do anything that has the word challenge in it. Um, yeah, but Sam, you were like, you're a winner. Yeah, I did. So, and you yeah. know what? It's great. So, I'm cool with that. so like, how, how do you have to fucking prepare for that shit? Because it looks like physically, like taxing and strenuous, like to have oh, to yeah, go through all that. The hardest thing, the hardest thing I have ever done in my entire life. But when I found out I was going, it's a very short time frame. They like call you, like, hey, are you available X date to X date? And then like you, you're like, uh, if you say I don't know, you'd be like, you just go check your calendar and you call them back. You're like, yes or no. You yeah. know, and um, and then sometimes we get like three weeks notice of like, hey, bye. You're going. And yeah. so if you aren't already preparing and you're not already in the gym, it's kind of like a too little, too late. Too yeah. Late to apologize type situation. Yep. So that would be I, me. <laughs> I started going to the gym. I didn't really like really try i'm not a gym person neither am I. never really have been i mean i was athletic when i was in high school and in sports but after that i was just like meh yeah and um i smoked still smoke but i quit i literally quit smoking the day i left <laughs> and it was i mean it was definitely it was definitely fucking hard that's that is for sure like it's not it was not an easy feat but this is what i've gotten into like wars with twitter trolls on is like people like oh you never came back blah blah blah. i'm like okay but i want to challenge before cp did yeah yeah you know i'm i'm undefeated in eliminations yeah so So technically i i have a perfect record yeah so technically why would you want to fuck that up you know like i would go out on a good note too like i mean if right go out as a badass and like now everyone you raise the bar and everybody has to now kind of meet your right. um your standards of how to win a challenge um so like that must be like like an awesome kind of thing to have as an experience now where was your challenge film Turkey. Ours was in Turkey oh, and Jesus. Namibia. So they actually went to the same house a couple seasons later. Yeah, yeah, I remember back. that. Yeah. It was literally literally the same exact house. They switched up the rooms a little bit in the gym. The gym and the new one was actually where my bedroom our bedroom was. At the okay. Time. But it just um I I thought I was going to do another one. Um, I got actually called for Rivals 2 to be on there with Marie, and then Marie had a conflict, and she wasn't able to do it. That's why I wasn't going. Gotcha. And then I was supposed to be on challenge the challenge Invasion of the Champions, mm-hmm. and something happened, and I ended up being an alternate, and then not I, I didn't get called up, and I was like, eh, whatever. I don't really care. But, like, now where I'm at in my life, like, I'll be 30 on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things in my life that I would like to do, and that's just not one of them. It's extremely yeah. mentally and emotionally taxing. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't remember who. I think I, I think Jordan was talking about it, and it's like you literally like when you come home, it's like it's like you come home from like prison. Like you have to readjust <laughs> to real life. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to readjust to people not wanting to fucking stab you in the back because of some random fucking thing. Yeah, 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 and and, you know? and yeah, the I can imagine, and then you're like you said, you're in that fishbowl, and then you come out, and it's just not the way that life is um, outside of you know an MTV house. Um, but I mean, the beauty of it is like you got to like do this phenomenal traveling, and then fucking walk away with 
cash, like money, like that's. I mean, come on now, Sam. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm not mad about it. And, that's for certain. Yeah, and and I can I can see why you know you want to move on to other things, which you know. Um, brings me to my next thing like what is sam got going like where do you go after doing that type of experience um i know travel is a big thing for you yeah so i did i did quite a lot of uh, quite a few appearances uh after the challenge and after uh the real world you know I, they flew me to a, a bunch of different cities um shit they they flew me to ottawa canada for something like it was like it was sweet <laughs> But after that, um, after, after the real world, I started dating a girl and I was with her for like four and a half years. We were engaged. Um, things happened. We went our separate ways. Um, but I really just went back to my normal life. You know, I never used the real world of the challenge as a platform to launch anything, mm-hmm. you know, which a lot of people do. Yeah. I'm going to awkwardly move this bottle without it. There we go. Is that better or worse? Yep. No, you're good. Okay. So, um, but like after, after the shows, you know, like I was with that girl for a while and we, like I said, we went, we went our separate ways and it's just it's in the, in the cards that I have now, it's just not feasible. You know, you have to take anywhere. You have to be, let your job know that Oh, I might be gone for eight weeks, but I could be only gone a week. Can you hold my job for me? Yeah. Nobody that's... with a career is going to be doing that. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's that's where I'm at now. You know, I've got a great job. I work for uh, a great company. They're very super inclusive. They've got, you know, they're accepting of everything. Literally, like, during June, because it's Pride Month, on our, yeah. like, corporate screensavers, there was, like, ramp, like, a, like all the LGBT flags and stuff like that's that. awesome pride month and stuff like that and like it was it's super awesome you know like i make great money i don't have a college degree but i'm happy with what i do what do you can, can you tell me what you do sam you don't have to tell me who you yeah. work for um i work in uh i work for medicaid uh, like, you work for medicaid yeah i work in medicaid mm-hmm Get out of here. Okay. Well, I, I'm a, I'm a social worker by trade, so um, I do I do so, with medicine. So you're you're right in potato potato. Yes. Well, and basically, everybody that I work with is probably on Medicaid. So, um, but yeah. you know, yeah. So, well, that no, that's great. I mean, like, you know, you you get to a certain point in life, Sam, and you know, I haven't been through the experience you know, nowhere near where you have, but you get to a certain point in life where, um, you know, you kind of reevaluate the things that are important to you. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be the fame, the, you know, all that kind of, you know, leads into other things, you know, Um, everybody's journey is, and this is what I tell people I work with all the time is everybody's journey is their own. And, um, you were able to do something outside of the box where maybe like a normal person, I hate to use the word normal. I shouldn't use the word normal. Um, But you know, a person who you're, you're, you're at your average everyday person. Yeah. The opportunities that I was handed. Yes, exactly. And, 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 you know, the experience alone is what changes the trajectory of, who you are as a person, you know what I mean? Like um, you were probably forever shaped and formed because of those experiences um, and because they were so unique, you know, not everybody has that situation happen to them. But, you know, somebody may not have went to you. Look, your friend wanted you to go to the audition and you were like, no, fuck no, I'm not going. She doesn't wind up going and you wind up getting you know, this whole experience from it um, no. where you could have woke up that morning and she said, Sam, I'm not going. And you could have been like, okay, fuck that and rolled over and who, you know, not have had that yeah, experience. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to be up at 530 in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> with, no. with, your, with your Capri Suns. <laughs> no. It was the, that, but you had to think, like, here's my, me aging myself. We didn't have no Uber Eats. Yeah. We ain't got no, you know, 
Grubhub, Seamless, yeah. Postmates. We didn't have none of that shit. Was, no, I had to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. I was ready. <laughs> like we showed up to the interview with blankets and pillows and our PJs, and then when like people started showing up, we ran across the street to the college that I went to to the bathrooms to change clothes, and she did her makeup in the mirror. <laughs> Listen, that's what we that's what you did back in the day. <laughs> you had to, man. Like, there was no there was you had no choice. So you mentioned before um you were in this relationship, you were engaged, um, things didn't work out, but you did allude to the fact that now you have somebody else that you are um in a relationship with and a kind of like how is that? How is that for the person that you're in a relationship with that, um, you know, their significant other has been on like MTV and all that kind of stuff? Like, how does that work in a relationship? So it's actually super funny because um, she she watched the show. She watched the real world. Mm-hmm. When, you know, because she's she just turned 30 in April. So we're, the, we're about the same age. She's a little bit older than me. But so she knew who I was because of the show and she had mm-hmm. followed me on Instagram and things like that. And then, um, and you know, when I went on the challenge, you know, I was like, Oh, I have a girlfriend. She's like, well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> and then, you know, I was off and on dating that girl for a while and I was off and on dating somebody else. And it just was like, a, I was just always in a relationship. And then, you know, the Instagram algorithms decided to play a game mm-hmm. of will this work or will it not? And for some reason, I don't know if she must have like liked a picture of mine, but I followed her back. She said probably, I think probably about a year ago. And um, so I posted like a boomerang. I don't really post on my Instagram story much. Mm-hmm. I just, it's just not a thing. But I guess I, I, post, I reposted a boomerang that a friend of mine took of me and she reacted to it. And then like a couple weeks later, I reacted to one of hers. And she just sent, like, the hard eye emoji back, like, no <laughs> words. And like, she was at, like, a, con- a country concert with her friend. And so I sent, I was like, hey, I was like, I hope you had a good night. And we started talking on Instagram. And it was, I got drunk, really, really drunk on, like, a Tuesday night. <laughs> and we had already exchanged phone numbers. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to FaceTime you. And so we FaceTimed. We sat on FaceTime for, like, two hours that oh, night. Cool. And yeah, we started, so we just FaceTime all, we FaceTime all the time, we text all day, and uh, there was a music festival here in Virginia Beach, it was called Something in the Water Festival, and Pharrell Williams actually put it on. Oh, and cool. I was like, cool, he's from here, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but he, so he put it on, and when the tickets went on sale, I bought two band, two general admission passes for three days, right off the bat, because I was like, I'm not going to get stuck going by myself, and I want to know who I'm going with. Yeah, yeah. And so I bought two, and my friend that was going to go ended up having to back out because she had to work. So I said something to Jess. I was like, hey, I was like, if you can fly, if you can get to Virginia Beach, this ticket is yours. And that was our first date weekend. She came to what a... in, never <laughs> met, never met each other. <laughs> and exactly. the rest is history. <laughs> exactly. So that was the end of April. We started talking beginning of March. And, but yeah, so we, but it was super crazy. Cause like, like, it's like, it's like those movies, you know, it's just like, so she flew in late Friday night. So she was going to miss the first day of the festival. Mm-hmm. She's going to get a rental car and drive down from Richmond. It's about an hour and a half for me. Well, Friday night ended up getting canceled because it was a really, really bad storm. So I was like, well, fuck, now I'm going to get drunk. Because that was my thing. I was like, I don't want to be hammered drunk when she gets here. And then her first impression, I'm going to be black out. Oh, my God, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> so then it, then it got canceled. I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm going to be really fucking hammered. And then I'm really going to make an ass of myself. <laughs> so I was talking to my friend. I was like, what should I do? And then I was like, I got it. So I drove, actually, to Richmond. And I waited for her to get off the plane. I knew she was going to change her clothes from airport clothes to cute clothes, as she calls it. <laughs> and But, yeah, we sat there, and I, like, stalked her in the airport. <laughs> and I waited, and literally, when she started walking towards the door, towards the rental car spot, I w- walked up towards her. I was like, you should probably watch where you're going. She, like, looked up right at me, and I kissed her sober right there, first time I ever saw her in person. And 
That was it. Oh, like that makes my heart just go puh, puh, puh. Yeah. (laughs) That's great. That's great. Sam, like, like, what I get from you, and and this, of course, is our first time meeting and conversating, uh, you, you just exude a person that goes after what she wants, and it's like no stopping you. And and why should the relationship be any any different? You know, um, yeah. you have to get the good ones, and you have to hold on to them. Keep on, you know, holding on. I to mean, them. yeah, we've. I mean, like I said, we've been dating since the end of it, April, and what is it? It's September now. She actually just left yesterday, so she's Aww. taken four. She's taken four trips out here. I've taken three trips out there. I have my my four trip booked. I'll be there in like two weeks. So we try to see each other try to keep at it at least once. Yeah. Once a month, if not twice. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you know what? That everybody's relationship is 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 their own and whatever makes it work for you guys, you know, nothing but the best to you guys. But I don't want to keep you too long because you're losing light there, Sam. Um, I know. I see I, I'm trying to get like in no, the that's <laughs> I'm like, you see me? I'm like awkwardly getting closer, closer. to the camera. <laughs> well, listen, Sam, anytime you are in New Jersey and you want to come see a little piece of the Jersey Shore, reach out to me and I will give you the VIP treatment and take you where you need to see outside of what you see. Uh, have you ever been to the Jersey Shore? No, I actually haven't. I think the only places in Jersey that I've been is like, Newark, Newark Airport, and Hoboken. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. The Hilton outside of the airport, you know. Well, listen. Next time you're in the area, you hit me up, and the Adeo family will show you how we get down here in Point Pleasant Beach. Uh, okay. You know, so you you have an open open invite to. Um, it's not San Diego. It's you know not, what? Here's my thing. Not, the water is cold. The water is cold. It's like, you know, oh, look. See, there we go. There you go. The awkward spotlight. spotlight. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's it's definitely, it's not going to be San Diego, but it'll be something. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, well, you know, you, you want to come through. You and just, I'm a New York Giants fan, so there's uh, that. Uh, then you can hang out with my dad because he bleeds the red. red the, white, blue. blue. Yes, yes. So, um, definitely come stop by when you're in town. We'll show you what the life is like outside of what you see on the Jersey Shore, um, which that's a whole nother conversation that I can have with you about. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, here's Jersey the thing. Shore experience. We can see how this one goes. <laughs> we can talk about all that other stuff later on another Yes. One. All right, Sam. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Safe travels tomorrow. Thank you for being on the show. And uh, everybody, that's a normalized podcast. Thanks to Sam for stopping by and shooting the shit with me for a little bit and letting us all in on the kind of really weird experience, I guess, of being on a reality show and one of the biggest reality franchises out there. So, Sam, thanks a lot. Safe travels, and everybody stay unnormalized. Thanks, boss. Have a good day.